So after over six months of ownership, not only do I own one Creality K1 Max, I now own four. And after all that time and really putting this thing through the ringer, what I still recommend it as one of my favorite 3D printers. Let's talk about it. Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Frank and today I want to talk about the Creality K1 Max. I did a review on this little thing about six months ago and I stated that it had replaced the Bamboo P1P as my favorite current 3D printer. And I've been putting this thing through the ringer for six months. Like I said, I have four now because they were that good and reliable. It has helped my Etsy shop, it has helped my production, and I wanna talk about all of that. I wanna talk about little quirks I've ran into, a couple little upgrades or changes I made to it, and if it's just still an overall good printer or is there something else on the market right now that I might recommend. But mostly, we're gonna be talking about this thing and just how I've been putting it to work. Now, if you don't wanna go and watch that recap video, a quick rundown of the printer itself. It is a Core XY printer by Creality. It is a fully enclosed printer. You can take this cool little lid off. You can push the door open. You can shatter it just like Uncle Jesse did. That's totally up to you. Has a belt cable driven system at the top, a really nice direct drive system. It's 300 by 300 by 300. Has a little carbon filter on the back, little charcoal thingamajiggy. And you guys will probably already notice immediately if you have a uh, K1 Max that I moved the filament holder to the side. It actually gives you the option to print a side mounted spool holder. This way, if you have them on shelves or racks like I do, you're not constantly reaching behind it to get to the spool. It can be kind of a pain in the butt but you could also relocate the filament holder if you have filament from the top you can relocate the tube on the side it does come out the back so you can easily angle the filament up you can put the filament on the top you have tons of different options which is great but this is how i set mine up this way the spool goes right here and i don't have to worry about anything it uses creality's new little touchscreen firmware system which honestly i haven't had any issues with i actually really enjoy their user interface and being able to copy files from one usb to another linking it up with creality print or linking these up with orca slicer that was game changing. Just like Bamboo Slicer, I can control my uh, P1Ps and X1 Carbon and all that. Orca Slicer lets me control all of my printers. And if it has remote capabilities, like the K1s, the P1Ps, the K1 Maxes, I can control and remotely send and monitor prints right from Orca Slicer. So the fact that I can do it with this, wonderful. If you want to learn more about Orca Slicer, definitely go check that out. Aside from absolutely brand new printers that I'm still unboxing and testing, Orca Slicer stays pretty up to date on all the machines out on the market. So you don't need to use Creality Print. That's probably my only complaint with the K1s is that a lot of people feel like they're forced to use Creality Print and it is not a good program. Switch over to Orca, you're welcome. Now, currently I'd say about 90% of the print hours that have been accumulated on my four K1 Maxes are honestly flexi Rexies. I have been printing so many of these for Etsy but what has been great is the reliability. Nothing will put a printer through its testing and pacing and wear and tear than just sending prints over and over and over again. What is going to wear down? What is going to actually fail or break? I probably put more hours on one of these printers than most people will put on most of their printers in a lifetime. I have done nonstop printing on this. And the only issues I've had with this printer is occasionally the bed adhesion. Now, if you remember in my original K1 video, I wasn't a fan of having to use a glue stick on the bed. So I didn't, well, I did, but then I went and swapped to a B plate textured bed. And this was great on my K1, or you could just use the glue, tomato, potato. It's honestly not that big of a deal. It was just my only issue with the K1. Well, it turns out they sell the same bed for the K1 Max. So I went and got one of these textured B plate beds for my K1 Max and it worked great. However, it was a weird, it doesn't like Rexies or it doesn't like silks. It was working with a lot of other filaments, but when I started using silks on this textured plate, I was getting weird adhesion issues and then like the tails would start to pop up and if the tail fails, it ruins the whole print. So I actually went back to the glue bed because it was just easier for the repetition and that's the part of you know mass production and just getting a bunch of stuff out. Whatever works the best for you is the thing that works the best. They're, just because this didn't work and the glue does, doesn't mean the, this plate won't work for you if you're doing cosplay or printing. All of this other stuff, aside from the Rexies, was printed on this textured bed and it came out fine. I just like to use the glue bed for the mass prototyping because I know, or the mass production, because I know that tail isn't gonna fail and I hope that makes sense. 
So I definitely recommend that textured bed if you're not gonna be running this thing 24-7, 365. It worked fine. But when it came to printing things like my Bionicle masks, and if you saw that video, I printed all six or seven Bionicle masks for Secret Santa, that was really cool. These are all printed on the K1 Max in under 20 hours. If you remember the Spider-Man video, I was printing these full-size textured Spider-Man helmets in under 20 hours on the K1 Max, where a helmet like this would have taken two or three days on something like a, a Creality Pro V2 or an Artillery X1. The fact that you can have a large core XY like this that does prints this, this big, this quick, this is a heavy, dense print. That's awesome. I've been using the K1s for all of the recent videos because they're just reliable. I was able to print this PAL sphere in uh, one Ma K1 Max and one K1 Max. I think these took like nine hours each because I wanted them to come out kind of nice. But I'll circle back to these Rexies. Honestly, this has been the real make or break of this printer. And I can even say for the normal K1, none of my printers except the bamboos and honestly, the X1 Carbon's been, uh, been having an attitude lately, but we'll get into that for another video nothing has been as reliable as these K1 Maxes. They just work. Now, Creality sent me that first K1 Max for that first K1 Max review. That was provided by them. I went and bought the other three because they were so reliable and I can show you guys the receipts if you want. It was not cheap. But for the same price, I could have gotten more P1Ps. I could have gotten a P1S. I could have gotten a Prusa XL. I, no, I wanted the K1 Max. It worked. And this is what's beautiful about the evolution of 3D printing. And honestly, I'm actually impressed that Creality is the one that is showing proof of this. Obviously, Bamboo has its ups and downs too. Creality's definitely had its ups and downs, but you can just go and get a printer like this out of box, I think it takes you about 10 minutes to set up, and most of that's just taking it out of the packaging and like screwing in the door or leave the door off if you want. That's totally up to you. This is probably currently my favorite cosplay 3D printer. This beats the Elegoo Neptune 3 Plus, this the 4 Plus. This beats everything. Though the price point on it does kind of suck, obviously being almost $900, not everybody has that floating around, and the $300 Neptune 3 Plus is a lot cheaper and the same size. But if you can afford this, the reliability and ease of use, I just, I can't recommend it enough. I'd say the only negative besides the price point on these printers are they're kind of loud. The high speed Core XY printing requires a lot of air and cooling. So this isn't something I'd put in your bedroom. It's gonna keep you up at night unless you sleep with a white noise machine or something, or uh, maybe you have sleep apnea and have a CPAP machine. I don't know. It's loud, that's totally up to you. I have them here in my garage. If they were in the room next to you though, I don't really think you'd hear them. You're not gonna hear the machine whining noises like we used to do with old 3D printers where it sounded like a robot. You're not gonna hear that. You're just gonna hear the turbocharged fan noise. So if you can block that out, that's fine. Now, as for materials and different things I've printed, I've only been using PLAs and silks. I am in the hobby side of 3D printing. I'm not doing PLA carbon fibers. I'm not doing ABSs. I'm not doing PETGs. I can say though, I have a couple buddies, Danny and Talon, who also do Iron Man and Cosplay. They have these printers too, and they have thrown Pet G at them and had great success. The profiles, especially that are an Orca slicer, are wonderful for this. So you're not gonna have a lot of issues swapping around to different filaments from what I've noticed. Now again, take that with a grain of salt. I haven't tested every filament out there and every other type of brand and material and put it through this printer. But in terms of PLA, PLA plus, uh, especially silks, being able to just toss silks at this thing with zero issues has been great. I don't know guys, I think that's gonna pretty much finish up this video. I don't have much more to say on this printer. My re initial review still holds up. But again, after six months of abuse and using four of them at the same time, I wanted to get an updated video out because this is a very popular printer right now. They, the K1 series is definitely competing with the bamboos. They have been giving me pretty much the same quality. We're just all waiting for Bamboo to come out with a larger Core XY printer because it'll probably knock this thing off the pedestal, but this is a spot that needed to be filled and Creality filled it pretty good. If you guys have any comments, questions, or concerns about anything you saw in the video, please drop some comments down below. If you have any questions about the K1s, the K1 Maxes, I am currently in the process of testing the K1C. I have two of them, don't ask why. Uh, that one prints carbon fiber. We're gonna say, we're gonna call it the K1 Carbon because of course Creality had to release something to try to compete with the X1 Carbon and you'll find out if it's good or not in that video. Uh, so stay tuned for that. And if you found this video helpful or informative or you learned something, please consider subscribing to the channel. It helps me out and then you get to stay up to date on all the videos I have coming out, where it's printer reviews or builds or cosplay or whatever I feel like doing. But I think that's gonna be a wrap for this video, guys. As always, thank you so much for watching. You have a good day.